Alrighty, finally found a bit of time in my schedule this morning. Maybe I'm going to before the sun gets it's quite bright out today. So here's the uh, all season solar cooker, and there's my roll of Reflectix aluminum duct tape. So I'm going to dismantle this thing, flatten it out, put the duct tape on it, put it back together, and do some testing. I'm not sure if your brain works like mine. If it does, I feel sorry for you. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is do this in stages. So I basically took this apart, took these uh, the side supports off. That's these guys here. And I flattened this piece out of the front. Hopefully you can see that. And make sure it's clean and dry. I just wiped it down with some paper towels. And uh, now I'm going to apply the uh, aluminum duct tape to this section first. Then I'll move to these side pieces. Then I'll do the back piece and then finish off at the inside. At least that's the plan. Let's see how it works. I guess I thought I should at least try to show this part. So anyway, this is the tape. I can't see the back of the camera, so hopefully you can. My first piece is on. Neatness counts, so don't do it the way I've done it. And you're supposed to allow for a quarter of an inch overlap. So what I'm doing is I'm just going beyond what I need, kind of marking it with my fingers, and saying, OK, Get your standard Christmas for Christmas kitchen scissors. I keep them in the kitchen, so that's why I call them kitchen scissors. Then the interesting part comes when you're trying to peel the backing off this stuff. So while well, trying to keep it as flat as possible, and if you have fingernails, this actually might work. If not, you could be at a bit of a, a loss. As I find this stuff is to be very difficult to peel the backing from. It's quite um, adhesive, unfortunately, and of course there. If there's a trick to this and you know it, I'd be happy to hear it. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to try to peel this, and it's not working out very well. Yeah, and I'm wasting a lot of valuable video time here, just picking away. Oh, I got it finally. Okay, so you peel the backing away. And this is where you got to be really careful. It's not bad till you get to the very end. Then the stuff tends to curl up. So grab a hold of it and hold it while you do this last bit, otherwise it will peel back and adhere to itself. Then, now another thing, if this was absolutely flat on the table, it would probably be a lot easier to do. However, I'm going to take a chance and see what it comes up with here. Oh, that's not bad. Now he says to use like a flat instrument, like a uh, whatever, uh, like a paddle or a spatula or something like that. Well, I'm going to do this old school. Just put it down with my hand so there will be wrinkles. In other words, worst case. So if this works out and it's not as neat as it could be, just imagine how much better it could be if it was actually neat. I'll trim these edges off later. Anyway, I'm just going to carry on, finish this off, and then we'll come back. So that's the that's the main motive is to get this tape onto the, the surfaces of the entire inside of the oven. So stay with me. Alright, before I carry on with the rest of it, i just show you to get this done. And as I said, it's not perfect. Uh, there's a few wrinkles here and there. And that's what I was striving for. So this would be worst case. If you take your time, really smooth it out. Use like a, like I said, a, a spatula or some sort of uh, smooth edge paddle, plastic hopefully, where you could take most of the wrinkles out of this stuff as you apply it. Spend some time. It will be much better because it will be more reflective. But I just put it on by hand, left whatever wrinkles in here, and we're going to see how it performs. Okay, I'm going to carry on with the rest of this. And once we get it complete, we'll do a quick temperature test using the bowls and my black pot. Well, we're making some progress here. So I've got the side pieces done, the front reflector, the front inside. I still have the back and the top reflectors to do here. Anyway, you know where they are. And I probably have got an hour into this at least, so pack your patience, especially if you don't have fingernails, because that seems to be the most aggravating part so far is getting the backing off the tape. Anyway, stay with me here, we're going to finish this. Alrighty, finally got all of the, uh, can't see the other end, but it, it is all done. Uh, you don't need tape on these because they're actually on the outside of the box. And of course the, the two supports that go on the sides. But everything else is now taped. If yours looks like this, 
Uh, no, let me rephrase that. Yours should look better than this. Anyway, so this is uh, what I've got. I'm going to put it back together and uh, let's see where we go from there. And I just realized that uh, before I take this any further, this flap here, this chunk, you don't need to tape this either because it actually ends up in behind this piece. So that piece and this piece over here, which I just put back together, has tape on it, but it doesn't need to be there. So save yourself some tape and don't do that. And it's back together. So, and the sun's just starting to sneak over the tree here, so it's just as well. So I guess it's supposed to look something like this when it's all done. But again, hopefully yours is going to be smoother. So, alrighty, let's get the pot in here, get it out in the sun, and see if we can record some temperatures. Alrighty, we're out in the well. So in here, I don't know if you can see it or not. Alright, so I've got the uh, Pyrex pie plate in the bottom. Then I've got the uh, granite ware circular roasting pan. I, this is the one I messed the lid up on. So my beat up thermometer it fell out of the oven once or twice. It's cracked, but I think it still works okay. And of course the uh, Anchor Hawking four quart bowl, which I'm going to place over this now. Just got to put the camera down. Not enough hands. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, it's reading basically nothing. I know it's going to be really difficult to see. That's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to spin this thing into the sun. We're going to use this marvelous sun sight here to get the shadow so that there isn't any shadow, and that tells us it's completely in the sun. And we'll let it sit for a while, and we'll take its temperature. So let's spin it around. You should use sunglasses, by the way. It's very hard on the eyes. Okay. So I'm looking at my shadow, and that is about optimum according to that. A oh, bit of shadow on the bottom. I would say right about there. Okay, so we'll let that go for a bit, and we'll see what kind of air temperature we get inside of that container. And maybe we'll try cooking. It's been about a half hour. It's about 2 o'clock, so it was about 1.30 when I put this out. So let's see where we're at. Ah. See that or not? Looks to be what? Eh, 270. Yeah, 270 Fahrenheit. Or about 140 Celsius. So, yeah, 275 we'll say. 140 C. That's not bad for a half an hour. As you can see, the little shadow stick is just showing a bit of shadow on this side. If I bump that over a bit. I can t there we go. So, just a bit of a correction. But again, it's only air in the container. But Hey, that's, uh, that's pretty warm for only a half an hour. And, uh, yeah, that's really hot. So probably, let's see, it's 2 o'clock. I'm not exactly sure we've got a lot of time to do any real cooking here. Uh, yeah, I probably don't have a ton of sun left. Uh, maybe tomorrow. So let's make this one, we'll do the cooking video as uh, the third in the installment. So we'll make this the second. So stand by for the next installment which will be actually cooking something a functional solar cooker thanks for watching I changed my mind I uh, decided to come back and 15 minutes later and it's very very close to 300 F what 145 Celsius yeah if another 15 minutes it would hit 300 I'm going to put some water in here just to see what it does one more check and then we'll call it a, a wrap stand by and it's been a half an hour Kind of hard to see, but kind of fogged over. But you can see it or not, but it's boiling, it's bubbling away there. So, uh, that was a liter of cold water. It went into the preheated pan, of course, it's only a very thin metal pan, and it's been sitting for a half an hour out in the sun. And uh, of course, I don't know when it started boiling, could have been five minutes ago, but we're going to say a half an hour, and it's uh, it's bubbling away there. So Yep, this is going to cook just fine. And I can't tell you what the temperature is. I do know it's at least 100 C or 212. Otherwise it wouldn't be bubbling. Anyway, that's all I got for this installment. We'll do some cooking on the next one. Again, thanks for watching.